Last act, I was able to hit Immortal 3, mostly by playing ISO, and in this video, I'll be going over some tips and things I learned throughout all my games. Even though I'm sure you'll already be familiar with some of these tips, chances are if you make it all the way to the end of the video, you'll learn something new. It took me a while to get around to making this video and putting it all together, so if you do end up finding it entertaining or useful, don't forget to share it with someone you think will find it useful too. One of the best uses for ISO's wall is to protect yourself or a teammate when you're trying to defuse the spike. It won't last long enough to fully defuse it, but you can easily get half safely and put a lot of pressure on the enemy team. In the same scenario, you can also rush behind the wall and catch the enemies off guard while they're busy worrying about the spike. One enemy remaining. You always want to be keeping an eye out for certain lanes where his contingency just fits really well. Like I showed in those examples, Haven C Long is a really, really good place where his wall just fills up the entire area. And two other examples of that I really like is when you're using it to push out on Sunset B Main and use it to cover that left side. Or using it towards stairs on Lotus when you're pushing out, as that way it makes it easier to rush any enemies that pushed forward. And even when it's not the spike, you can just use it to keep yourself when you're trying to get other objectives, whether that be getting an ultimate orb, trying to close a door, or even just picking up a better gun that the enemy had. Another situation you'll have a lot of success using contingency is when you're isolating fights against two enemies. Like here, the enemy sky can't properly swing to help the jet. In this one, Omen can't swing to trade the jet. And here, if I just cleared this corner properly, I would have had a really free kill on the jet with the enemy team being completely unable to help her. Contingency is also really good against Cypher, who is sort of ruling the meta at the moment. And that's because if you use it before running into his tripwires, he can't spray you. Like here in this clip, I only live on 6 health because those first few bullets were blocked by the wall. And then in this clip, the Cypher from Gen just can't hit me whatsoever. Here you can see what I'm talking about from the Cypher's perspective as well. Having said all that though, this is far from the easiest ability in the game to use like you can see in these examples here. I throw it out for myself pretty carelessly and it ends up preventing my teammates from getting kills in both cases. But yeah, overall I really like is contingency, you just want to make sure you're staying really close behind it so that it blocks the most angles possible. When it comes to ISO's Q ability, his undercut, I cannot put enough emphasis on just how good this ability is on eco rounds and when you're using pistols, lower damage weapons, things like that. Like I could probably make a 10 minute video just showing clips of me getting like 2-3 kills on pistol rounds with a classic because of the undercut. I won't make you sit through all of that, but yeah, this ability is crazy good with a classic especially, as it makes so many of your right clicks turn into one shots when they otherwise wouldn't. Like this clip starts off with just one kill with my sheriff and an undercut, but that alone is enough to change the pace of the round. No distraction. Hey. One last point for those eco weapons, I want to single out the Marshal, because even if the enemy has full shields, if you make them vulnerable, the Marshal will be able to eliminate them in one body shot. It's a similar thing as well when it comes to wall bangs, because when you hit them with your undercut, all of a sudden it takes way less bullets to actually eliminate them because of that double damage. So basically you just want to be keeping in mind you can always get free kills with your undercut by wall banging people. You'll also want to keep an eye on your minimap a lot when you're using undercut. You can just throw it where you think enemies are. Then when your teammates see the enemy, whether it be them or through a drone or a dog or something, once you make that contact on the map, you can shoot them through the smokes. Be stabilizing. One enemy remaining. It's a similar concept here, even though I'm not the one getting the kills. I wait until the enemy breaks the cipher trap wire, making that contact, then throw out the undercut and it gets free kills. Here's a similar example where I communicate with my sky, 
and it lets us get two easy kills on our bonus round. So yeah, you always want to be looking for opportunities where you can throw the undercut for your teammates, not just for yourself. You can apply that same logic to damage dealing abilities that your teammates have as well, whether that be mollies, raise grenades, or my favorite, which is server utility, because both the shock dart and its ultimate become one shots if the enemy is affected by the vulnerable. When you are using undercut though, you do need to be careful of how easy it is to make your teammates vulnerable. Like here you can see as I go to throw it, the omen's not even on my screen, and all of a sudden he appears, becomes vulnerable, and dies faster. And then there was this scenario where I do wonder if this guy would have actually died to that grenade if I didn't make it vulnerable. Another thing to be mindful of is how predictable you often become after using undercut. You'll throw it and instantly want to swing out and follow up on that. So sometimes you might want to wait a little bit longer before peeking so you don't get one tapped. Next, let's talk about ISO's signature ability, which of course is his double tap. There aren't too many tips for it as it's kind of a straightforward ability. However, one thing you need to be careful of is that his shield sometimes gives away your location. Like here, I see this ISO early because of the shield. Mind you, since that clip, the size of the shield got nerfed and reduced a little bit, but it's still something worth keeping in mind. Another thing worth keeping in mind is how effective double tap is against operators and marshals. If you're able to get that first pick and then the shield, you become an AWPers nightmare, like here, where I'm even able to tank two shots of an AWP. One mistake I found myself making a lot with double tap was trying to shoot the orbs every single time. Now, obviously getting the shield up is ideal and what we want, but you should always be trying to prioritize killing the next enemy, assuming of course you actually know that they are nearby. Especially with the recent buff for the orbs lasting 3 seconds now, you don't need to rush to break it, and instead you can give it a bit chill, see if anyone else swings you, and then break the orb right before it disappears. Another thing I realized I was doing wrong was being way too careful with activating my double tap, and sometimes just not even using it until after the fire was already done. I think I did this because I was scared of wasting it, like how you might waste a jet dash by using it too early, but realistically you have two charges of double tap and they last for 20 seconds each now, so really in all of those scenarios you're seeing me in there, I should have had double tap activated the whole time, and yeah, I guess the tip here is just don't be worried about wasting the double tap, because you'd much rather use it too early than not use it at all. Finally we come to ISO's ultimate, kill contract. There are so many little things worth mentioning here, firstly let's talk about high priority targets. Ulting the enemy chamber after he uses two to force is one of the most important things you can do as ISO. I would even argue you should just hold your ultimate and use it to counter him, like you might use a brimstone ult to counter a killjoy lockdown. Especially if chamber is using it on an eco round, you can just completely cancel out their only win condition and leave them helpless with a classic. Spike down B. It's a similar thing here when my ISO ults this viper, even though he ends up losing the duel, because he takes Viper off of the map for so long, her ultimate actually goes down, and we're able to win this round because of this Arto ultimate. Another obvious example of those high priority targets is taking the enemy Sentinel off their site, the Cypher and Killjoy, as their utility all goes down and your teammates can just rush onto the site, not having to worry about trips or anything. Even in times when you end up losing that duel of your ultimate, as long as you communicate with your team what you're doing, they should be able to follow up and kill the enemy when they come back to the map. One enemy remaining. So yeah, it's always important to tell your team where or who you're aiming to ult, that way they can immediately take the space as soon as it opens up. Another thing you can try with your team on eco rounds is force just the one rifle strictly to use in your ultimate, like here, Omen gives me his gun so that I can get an ice set of 1v1 with it. If you're having trouble with hitting your ultimates and find yourself missing them a lot, Start relying on other sources of information first. So sometimes that might look like a piece of util from your teammate, let's say a sofa dart. Or other times you can simply use it to play around the spike. When the enemy starts planting or defusing it, send the ultimate in that direction. No distraction. 30 seconds left. Same thing applies here in the 2v1 where I ultimate off the spike tap, and even though we have worse guns, the jet would have a free kill on Sky if I did end up losing this duel. No distraction. Backing off and using your ultimate when you go down to low health is a really good idea, 
since your health gets replenished in your ultimate and you can get at least one more even fight in and maybe even get a shield off of it. One sort of niche thing you can do is use kill contract to actually dodge kill days lockdown. So if you ever find yourself in a spot where you can't escape and are going to get detained, you should consider using your ultimate. Another niche thing, and this one is specific to bind, is to remember that when you're in Isu's ultimate, you're completely unaware of your surroundings. Like I fully send it through this teleporter and the enemy Isu has no idea because you can't hear anything. One last thing is to be really careful ulting against the Yoru. If you simply go off the sound of the enemy rushing, chances are the clone will be up front and you're just going to end up embarrassing yourself. And to end it off, here are some of my best rounds on ISO using all of his utility. Contract complete. Stopping fire. No distraction. Stop the fire. Stand aside. One enemy remaining on four. Distractions. Spike planted. Contract complete. I got ISO. Destabilizing. One enemy remaining. Got three. Last player standing. Making cover. Back to the dangerous.